So now we come to uh, another not another problem in NP called SAT. Right? SAT is short for satisfiability. So basically, it is a Boolean formula, and we are asking whether it is satisfiable. Right. So what does the Boolean formula contain? It contains variables, let's say x1, x2, h3. There are negated variables, which is x1 complement, x2 complement. Right. So both of these variables and the negated variables are sometimes together called literals. Literals are both x, xi, x1, x2, x3, and so on, and x1 complement, x2 complement, etc. Right. So both variables as well as the negated variables, and they are connected using two logical things, logical connectors, right? So one of them is and, which is depicted as this, uh, depicted like this, like a like an inverted V, or an A without a bar, and the other one is or. So or is depicted like a V. It's exactly like a V, right? So one example is this, uh, this Boolean formula given here. So let's say this is phi. So, uh, is there a way to assign values to x1, x2, x3? Uh, so, there are only three variables x1, x2, x3, such that uh, this whole formula phi evaluates to true. So, I want to make this formula true. Is there a way to assign um, x1 and x2 values, x1, x2, x3 values, so that the whole formula evaluates to true? Let's see. So, uh, so the first, so it's an and of four things. So first the and of x1, then x1 complement or x2, then x2 complement or x3, and then x3 complement. So there is an and of x1, which means x1 should be true, right? Maybe I'll write it here. So x1 should be true. Because if x1 is false, the whole thing is false, right? Because it's an and of four things, right? So x1 should be true. But then if x1 is true, then x1 complement is false, right? So now I want this part to be true. x1 is true means x1 complement is false. So which means x2 has to be necessarily true. Otherwise, this part is going to be false. So x2 also has to be true. Now we know x2 is true, right? Which means x2 complement is false. So now I want this clause x2 complement or x3 to be true. Now it necessarily means that x2 is true. So, so the only way phi is satisfied is if x1 is true. And now I want to satisfy this clause, the second clause. So the only way phi can be satisfied is if the second clause is true. But we know x1 has to be true. So x2 also has to be true. And now since x2 has to be true, the, the and the third clause has to be true, x3 also has to be true. Right. So from the first three clauses, what we gather is that x1, x2, x3 all has to be true for the phi, has to, phi to be true. But let's see. So the final clause is just x3 complement. Right? But then we already saw that x3 has to be true. So this has to be false, which means whatever we try, so we got that x1, x2, x3 has to be true, but then x3 has to be false. But then x3 has to be assigned either true or false. It cannot have both assignments, which means this is not satisfiable. Right? Because we cannot get x1, x2, x3 values in a way that this be evaluates a true. Right? Now, suppose this was not there. Suppose the last clause was not there x3 complement was not there, then of course this would have been, um, right? suppose then this this was not there, then this would, then this clause 5 would have been satisfiable with x1 true, x2 true and x3 true, right. So now let, let me just bring it back, right. So this clause is, this formula is not satisfiable. So the, the question of satisfiability is, is a given Boolean formula satisfiable? Satisfiable means is there an assignment of true false to the Boolean variables such that the formula evaluates to true. It can again be uh, checked that uh, this, this question is an NP. 
right why because uh, we can do something similar to what we did earlier right we can non deterministically assign x1 to be true and x1 to be false so for all each variable we non deterministically pick true or false right and now within the two options we we pick x2 true and x2 false and similarly here right and so on right maybe x3 true x3 false and finally we get uh, we get something like right we get something like two power n possible uh, options sorry not two options let me just say computation paths and for each path we check whether um, so but then each computation path let's say let's take uh, some path right so let's take some path um, let's take some path something like this now each computation path corresponds to a certain assignment right now we just have to verify that assignment path is it does it satisfy the formula or not if it satisfies we accept if it does not satisfy we reject so if there is a satisfying assignment it is one of these two power n possible paths and then that path leads to acceptance if the formula is not satisfiable meaning whatever you try it's not going to accept then all paths will reject so this is obviously an np algorithm and uh, uh, this is a non deterministic algorithm it's a correct algorithm and the running time is polynomial because it takes n steps to non deterministically assign uh, yes or no or true or false to each of these n variables x1 to xn and then it takes again linear time to verify okay so this this may linear time or maybe at most polynomial time to verify right, depending on how the formula is structured that uh, whether this assignment satisfies the formula or not right so i think linear time is enough right so this is clearly this shows that sat is in np right a uh, couple of further things uh, that i want to just quickly uh, briefly tell so the formula that we saw here uh, right this formula that I, that, I, that we saw here it is it is in this form called conjunctive normal form because i have an and of things so i have x1 and x1 complement or x2 and x2 complement or x3 and x3 complement right so i have an and of things but then and of so i have an and of clauses where each clause is an or of literals right so this is called conjunctive normal form so here also i have another formula which is a conjunctive normal form where i have three clauses first clause is x1 or x2 complement or x3 or x4 right second clause is x2 or x3 complement or x5 third clause is x4 complement or x6 so it's a it's like the formula can be viewed as sorry c1 and c2 and c3 it's an and of three clauses where each clause is an or of literals right so for for instance c1 is simply x1 or x2 complement or x3 or x4 c3 is simply x4 complement or x6 so it's an and of clauses where each clause is an or of literals that's called conjunctive normal form right also sometimes it is abbreviated as cnf conjunctive normal form so uh, i can define a language called cnf sat cnf sat simply is asking if a given formula is it satisfiable so it is just like sat right sat is given a formula is it satisfiable cnf is also asking the same question but the given formula is in cnf form right so this is a in cnf form 
right so i i have so there is a certain structure to our the formula that is given and then we have to determine whether it is satisfiable right so this is a conjunctive normal form and you can check that this is actually satisfiable this is in this is in uh, cnf set so you can set x1 to 1 which satisfies class 1 x2 to x1 to true which satisfies class 1 x2 to true which satisfies class 2 and let's say x4 to false which satisfies class 3 right so that's enough that's enough so this is satisfiable so the above let's say this is called let me call it psi so above psi above formula psi is in cnf set and further i want to make one more definition so this is cnf set um, earlier we defined set here i want to define one more thing called three cnf set or three set right this is also a, this is actually a special case of cnf set so cnf set means um, given a formula is satisfiable and the formula is in cnf uh, form 3 cnf set is saying that it is in cnf form but with the additional condition that each clause has exactly three literals so here in the formula psi over here right if you see clause 1 has four variables clause four literals clause 2 has three and clause 3 has two but in 3 cnf set each clause must have exactly three literals exactly three literals that is and then we are asking whether it is satisfiable right so this is this is even further uh, restriction on um, on the structure of the given formula so perhaps the hope is that maybe if the if the for if the the formula has a certain specific restriction or a specific format then maybe it is easier to figure out whether it is satisfiable or not right anyway uh, the form the, the 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 approach that i mentioned for sat being in np i can i can use the same approach for cnf sat and 3 cnf sat right so i can guess a certain assignment what we are doing is we are guessing a certain assignment and then checking whether uh, this assignment satisfies the uh, formula if if the guessed assignment satisfies we accept if the guessed assignment does not satisfy we reject if the formula is satisfiable one of the guesses will lead to accept if the if the formula is not satisfiable all the guesses will reject right so um that come concludes most of what i want to say so we said what is uh, how to measure time complexity for an order terms turing machine right it is the length of the longest path and then we take over all the possible inputs of the same length right then we defined n time tn then we defined np then we also talked about the p versus np question right so p is a class of languages that can be decided by deterministic turing machine in polynomial time and np is a class of languages that can be decided by non deterministic turing machines in polynomial time right the question is p is clearly a subset of np is it a proper subset and um, I, we discussed a bit about that and then we saw some examples uh, we saw subset sum we saw three colorable and we saw sat right in each of these cases when we saw that it is an np right we the the approach was the following right um we'll just write that here in all the above problems to or the approach the np approach was to guess a solution right we guessed a solution and then verified it right so that's an observation now now the question is the question is now are all the np solutions like this 
like if something is in np does it always has to be of this form right or is it just that these three problems it just happen to be of the guess and verify type right are all the the np algorithms of the guess and verify type and the answer to that we will see in the next lecture right so we saw what is n and n, n uh, not substituting machines we saw n time we saw np and p we saw the p versus np question and then we saw that three examples all of which had this guess and verify approach so the question is is it just that it is by accident that these pro three problems had the same guess and verify approach right so i hope it's clear what i mean by guess and verify in all these cases uh, in the case of three colorability we guessed a three coloring and checked whether this is a proper coloring here we guessed a subset and checked whether it the subset adds up to the sum here we are guessing a assignment and check whether it is satisfying right so the question is are all the np algorithm of this type the answer turns out that any np algorithm can be converted into this type even if it is not of this type right but that we will see in the next lecture and that concludes uh, lecture number 46 Uh, this also concludes week nine, week the lectures of week nine. So we completed computability theory by seeing PCP post correspondence problem and uh, an application. We sh we showed that uh, it is undecidable to determine whether a given context free grammar is ambiguous. Followed by uh, we we began the we began complexity theory. We defined the classes. Uh, we began time complexity. We saw what is uh, d time tn and time tn we saw p we saw np and then we saw examples for languages that are in p and np right and uh, we'll continue to learn about uh, p np and other facts and aspects of uh, 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 time complexity theory in the next week uh, so see you in week 10 thank you